Welcome to another video tutorial from 2 dkmartguru.com. For this video I'll be working in Affinity Designer to create simple designs with crisp outlines. To show the process I'll be creating fish like these that I did for my grandson to color in and cut out by using simple shapes like circles along with the pen tool and the note tool to keep the note count at a minimum. This makes the editing a lot easier and keeps the lines a lot cleaner than using for example the pencil tool and hand draw the shapes. Let's start with two circles. I line them and combine them using the boolean add. The advantage is now I just have a very limited number of nodes that are easy to manipulate. I always keep in mind when I do something like that that I might need variations of the design. In this case I want a rather generic fish shape that can easily be manipulated and create a whole bunch of similar but different fish to make it look interesting. Now that I have the base shape I create the outline, a simple stroke. I set it to non-scaling because I want to copy and paste the same width and stroke pattern to other elements to keep it consistent. The eye is just a bunch of circles again with the same outline stroke for that shape to match the body and then I duplicate shapes. It's faster to duplicate than create something new in my opinion. So the fins are just deformed circles. Using the node tool it's easy to adjust the positions of the nodes and change the curves to create clean and crisp new shapes. With the basic elements in place it's time to add some decoration. I am using thinner lines and use the pressure curve to adjust the lines and taper them towards the end. For a more consistent look I try to limit it to two different widths for my strokes. In this case I used an 8 point and a 6 point stroke. While working on designs like this I turn the scaling of the strokes off because I want the strokes consistent while duplicating. The gill turns into the pattern for the scales and it has the same thickness and attributes. I can turn the scaling on later when I have a finished design. While working in the note tool clicking on a line while holding the alt key is a quick way to turn it from a curve back to a straight line. Using the same stroke but changing the pressure curve creates nice variations to my lines. So these ones are the tapered ends. I select them all and change the curves to taper to just one side. That way the lines match the shape of the top fin tapering towards the top only. I like to save my pressure curve profiles because usually I don't use them just once but several times within a design. One of the problems with Finite Designer is that these profiles cannot be saved outside the one document that you use them in. An alternative to that is creating a style with just the pressure curve as the defining element. It doesn't look too good in the thumbnail so you might want to give it a proper name but that way you can store pressure curve profiles across different documents. As you can see I'm having slight issues with the placement of my notes. Simple solution to that is I have the snapping tool on, turn it off and you get more freedom to place your notes. So now with the design complete I select the outer elements, duplicate them and combine them with the boolean add and add a contour to that. That way I get my outline that has the stitch line for the cutting out. So I create a dotted line and set the two values for the dash. The second one 
being higher than the first one as I'm working with the rounded capping. And here's the initial fish design. Now it's time to create some variation, altering the fin, changing the position of the eye. There's very few nodes that need to be moved to make a new design. The only thing I have to create individually for each fish is the contour shape, but that's a quick selection of the shapes, duplicating, combining, and then adding the contour. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new today, hit the like button to celebrate your new bit of knowledge. To help you remember everything you've learned even better, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you'd like to see on this channel or on my website in the comments below, and I hope to see you again soon.